and welcome to the very first episode of Keep or Yeet, where I lose my mind testing, crafting and sewing gadgets so you don't have to. Let's start this, shall we? I have a box full of sewing gadgets to test. The mini iron number two with the adapter. I think this thing is for ironing the seams flat and open, as well as some weird quilting things that I do not understand. Get a beautiful base, a tiny screwdriver and the thing itself. Let's see if this will help us or not. It's not the longest cable ever, but I think it's fine. Low temperature first, because I don't wish to burn anything. Ew, fancy. Well, let's do something else while it warms up. Oh, you fell down. There are instructions in the box. Still nowhere near warm. Sushi, can you catch the fly, please? Kill it. I hate flies. It's warm to the touch but it's still not warm enough. I should be taking notes of the time, right? Don't have a clock here downstairs and I don't wear a watch. Well, I have in the lowest setting, so maybe this is why it's not warming up. Let's crank it up to the highest setting. One of the problems that I have when I'm pressing seams open is that with the big, you sort of hit some things that you don't want and then you have weird creases and this is supposed to help you with that. It's hot enough that the seams are staying open. The whole point of this subject, right? Hot enough to make a crease, but will it be hotter. I'm gonna leave this on. I'm gonna work on something else. Going to come back to it and see what happens. Because I'm not satisfied with this not burning my fingers off. One eternity later. It's been half an hour approximately. I cut and sewed this bodice mop. And let's see now if it will work. I already burned my hand on the stand of the thing. Seems pressed flat and now let's press them open. It wasn't really cheap, but I was skeptical nonetheless. Seriously, this is so niche and can be used only for this. Like it's not that I can press a whole garment with it because it won't work. And how do I evaluate this? To do what it's supposed to do? Yes. It takes a lot of time though. Would I recommend this to you? If you have a lot of seams to press open or I don't know, you're into quilting, then yeah. If you're just a sewist who sews sometimes, Nah, don't bother. The normal big thing will do the same. A little bit more work, but it will do the same. It's a few months later and I have an update on this. I tried to use it for the Taylor Swift dress to help me glue onto the fabric. It doesn't get hot enough for that. Is this a keep or a yeet? It's a yeet. It's just too much money for something that is so niche. It's not hot enough. For me, it's unfortunately useless. flower stitching foot. I actually don't know what it does. I saw this on Instagram and I kept, okay, I have to try this out. It's supposed to do these kind of flowers here. Let's see. <laughs> I'm not sure if the fabric needs stabilization or not. So try it without. Hopefully things will not explode as usual. I think this needs to go here and it's a huge thing. Oh my God, I'm so scared. I will read the instructions because I don't wish to kill my machine. So anyway, we the need to that the best regulator. Ah, small, middle and big. So I want the middle one. I don't know what they want from me. Why is it not going in? Hello, can you please work? Bigger stitches. These are not flowers. These are just weird thingies. I want flowers. Ah, so I should be using this one and not the only zigzag. Let's try this again. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The needle bar is not really hitting this thing to make it move. You see that? It's not really going up. This is what makes it turn. So it worked for two minutes and now it doesn't work anymore. This is the mechanism that makes it turn. Needle bar will hit this. That will make the thingy go. But ah, now that there is no thread, it's turning. It is a flower now. Ha ha ha. back. More of a star than a flower, in my very humble opinion. I certainly need to learn this. <laughs> I think it would be cool to make a fabric out of this, like random flowerly flowers. I don't know what to tell you. Is it worth the money? I don't think so. Does it work? Flimsy and fidgety, but yeah, if you can get it in the right position, I guess it works. Is this just too much trouble for this? Way too much trouble. Do I recommend this? Get yourself a quilting foot, a good 
quilting foot and you can make your own flower in free range embroidery with a machine. You will be happier, believe me. The next gadget is a energy saving lamp clothing car. What is this exactly? It's a laser sewing guide. It is literally a laser that you put on your sewing machine so you can sew quilting patterns or beautiful embroidery motifs. It has a wonderful Chinese plug adapter. But that doesn't sound good. It has a very strong magnet and I don't think it will be going anywhere. You have a very nice laser pointer. Very, very strong. I don't like looking at it. There is no instructions. I don't really know how to use this. I just know that the drawing needs to move together with the fabric so you were able to do whatever it is you're doing. So this is my beautiful design. Somehow those two need to move together. I don't think I can use this foot, but let's... let's... Yeah, I can't. I need a, a quilting foot. I'm not prepared. I need a quilting foot. Bye. A few months later. I'm still trying to figure out how to use the laser. Now I have the quilting foot that I needed. Just a generic one, nothing special. But how will I attach both the design and the fabric together in a way that I can move the design without making it go all over the place? The thing I prepared the last time I was trying to use this and I totally forgot. I want to redo this swivel. And when I move the fabric, maybe I will make the drawing. Oh my God. Chinese plug. My adapter is not here. Got it! Oh, still making the weirdest noise. I'm not able to turn off the feet dogs for this machine, but if I use a zero stitch, then it will work the same way. And now I try to move it. Oh, but can you see this? Ah, this is not good. Ooh, went off the rails. Wait, with a bigger piece of fabric. And hopefully I will not hit the pins holding this in place. This is my design. This is what I was trying to accomplish. Let me try something else. Let's make a star. Try to follow the thing, but I think the fabric is not really staying in place enough. An embroidery hoop and try again. A very nice squiggly line. Definitely better with the embroidery hoop. Let me try the star again. Um, nope, no. Nope. Should I be nice and give it the benefit of the doubt? With time, you can practice and have better lines so you can follow the design. Design, or it's just like a gimmick that doesn't work. If you have this and you're successful using it, let me know. I want to see your work, please. Keep or eat. I'll let you decide. It's no secret that I struggle to cut straight lines and I always wished I could do it, but I can't. No matter how hard I try, my lines are always squiggly. There is a solution for that. Why don't I clean my stuff before I start shooting? There! And it comes in a huge box, apparently. The box is huge, the thing isn't. This is a roller cutter with a ruler attached to it. So she ate this one. Oh, you cut, you cut. Whoa! It smells like snorkel equipment. And that is such a random thing to say. Dude! Just open! Beautiful blade! And this is the ruler. Quilting ruler, sort of. The lines are pretty thick though, so I guess it's not that good for precision cutting. It's supposed to help us cut straight lines. A very fiddly tool. Very hard to cut on a straight line, as you can see. This is a normal roller cutter blade, so there is no doubt it will cut fabric. So you can close it like so, so you don't get hurt. And if you open it, Mm. Opening it's a little hard. Ugh. So here you can open it and change the blade if you want to. You press this down and you can cut whatever it is you want to cut. Press it down. Oh, the noise. The noise is awful. The noise is really awful. And then... I think I didn't press enough. Hey, cool. It cuts and it's a straight line. Four layers of tool. Let's see if I can cut eight layers of tool. That will make for two layers of normal fabric. It's just this noise. This noise is, is, is awful. It cuts straight lines. I'm so happy with this. You have no idea how happy I am with this. Moving the guard is a little bit hard, but other than that is okay. You have to put a lot of force to press it down. But not much because the fabric is thick or anything, it's just because this plastic bit is really hard to press down. This is my new best friend. I am so freaking happy. I'll be finally able to cut straight lines. I don't think I'll be ever able to sew straight lines, but at least cutting them will be easier now. 
Is it a keep or a heat for you? For me, it's definitely a keep. Just the noise could be a little bit better. Perfect. I love it. one is a beautiful handheld sewing machine that works like a stapler. Yes, you heard it right. It's a stapler. So here goes the bobbin. Also comes with these two hickeys so you can put a bigger bobbin on the machine. <gasps> that was loud. And it's a one thread machine. It's like this infinity knot. If you pull, everything comes apart. Like the other handheld sewing machine I had, the one that I used in the car. But this is good for exercising your fingers, I think. Put this in the middle because I have no idea which direction it will go. So. Dudes. It works. And the stitches are beautiful. What? <laughs> I was expecting a disaster, stress, fire, kittens dying, but this is actually working. The top stitch, the under stitch is a chain, and if you pull it, it will come apart beautifully. It's like a very cheap piece of plastic and some weird sheet metal. Oh god, the sheet! <laughs> I like this. I think I need to sew a whole garment with this thing. Let me know in the comments what should I do? Keep or yeet? Surprisingly keep. I mean, this is the cheapest plastic I've ever seen. But for the price I paid for it, I'm very surprised it actually works. <laughs> what should I do with this? Please let me know. Well, this was a quick one. Sour Patch Kids, anyone? in place. <laughs> this next gadget was also an Instagram thing that I saw. I bought it in July and I lost all of the original footage of me unboxing it and making the first tests. So let's repeat what I said four months ago. First one is called Carlchen. 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 Little Carl. It's a gauge that you attach on your trusted shears so you can calculate and cut seam allowances or straighter lines than you would do without it. It's a German company, I think. It came with this very fancy card instruction thingies with a few explanations on how to use this. Mm -hmm. There is a screw here and you can move it around to the size that you need. This version is for either left or right-handed scissors. I'm left-handed so I will use this on the right side. Let's test with this beautiful piece of fabric first. I guess the straightness of your lines will be as good as your hands are stable. So this is my pattern and I need to cut a seam allowance this big. There is a very strong magnet. You attach it to your beautiful scissors. Take your pattern and your gauge needs to stay on the line. My hands are not that stable, so my lines are not straight. There is, however, a nice version for the roller cutter. So you have here and you just follow the gauge. This is way better to cut because you can control the line better. A very nice and straight seam allow. This is a pattern for something. You have straight lines, you have corners and you have curves. I want a small seam allow. Oh god. Oh, oh god. This is bullshit for curves. Look at that. For straight lines, I guess it works fine. Couldn't get such crisp lines. Again, earthquake hands out of control all the time. The roller cutter. Straight lines, corners and the curve. I don't generally cut curves with a roller cutter anyway, but let's do this. You really need to turn the screw, otherwise it goes up and down. When you're marking seam allowances, this is not something you want for your seam allowance gauge to move. <laughs> this is so stupid for curves. Like what? Great for straight lines, terrible for curves. I really like the one for the roller cutter because I can control it better than the one for the scissors. And the one for the scissors keeps moving too much when you're cutting. So I don't know, I don't recommend the one for the scissors. They're expensive, they are very expensive. And also I got as a bundle a nice pair of scissors called Paul. <laughs> Paul and Carl go together, they're friends. 
partners in crime. This was one of the best scissors I've ever had. Now, after four months, they're not as sharp anymore. And these are very expensive scissors. Since they are lefty scissors, I have no possibility of sharpening them myself. Don't recommend the scissors. Don't recommend the attachment for scissors. Totally recommend the attachment for roller cutters. This is pretty cool. So I guess this one is a keep. And this shit is a yeet. The shears were so good though. Why did they die so quickly? I didn't cut anything else other than fabric using them. Why did they lose sharpness so fast? Four months? No. These are normal Fiskars. They cost this much. I have this for two, almost three years, and I never had to sharpen them once. Kind of sad that Paul let me down. You should be ashamed of yourself, Paul. Ashamed. The next one, I am 100% sure it's not going to work, <laughs> but we tried anyways. It's a cutting doohickey. What do you mean by doohickey? It's like a swivel knife, but bigger. This is supposed to be very sharp, so it will cut fabric and whatever it is you want to cut. It's not a rotary cutter though. I am not sure this is going to work as intended, at least not for fabric. I have some beautiful paper. This is marketed as being perfect to cut Spirals. Very hard to control. Spirals and curves. It's not cutting through paper and I'm putting a lot of force on it. I doubt it will cut through fabric. Skinny cotton poplin. Very thin. Almost sheer. Let's try a straight line first. <laughs> they lied to me! If this was a tiny roller cutter, this would work very well. Pretty much useless for fabric. Do you want a raggedy look? It's destroyed. We'll cut through felt because they used it on felt as well. Felt, 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 felt. <laughs> the thinnest and cheapest and weirdest felt. I, I mean, it kind of cuts, but only when you're pulling towards you. If you're going away from you, forget about it. This was so promising. It comes with two extra blades. I guess all of them are going in the trash. Yes. The next one is something I'm quite excited about because not only it was suggested by one of our lovely bacons, but it would have saved me from the troubles while making the sound of music. Fabric crayons. Fabric crayons. These are crayons to use on fabric. You fixate them with the iron and in case you don't like how they look like, you can wash them off with cold water before fixating it. I don't trust the removal to be so easy, but you never know. I have two pieces of fabric. Stretchy cotton poplin. Let's try the red because red is such a weird, tough pigment on fabrics that I don't think that even when you're not fixating this, that it will come off, but we will try. The lines are not very crisp. They are crayon lines. Crayons are never crisp. Just making some random things with the colors to test it out. This is the one I'm not fixating. So I will put an X here. It is gooey, like it stays on my fingers. And now let's do one that we fixate using the same colors. A fair comparison. Beautiful design. Just a second, I will iron this. A piece of paper, a piece of paper, a piece of paper. I don't have any paper, so I will use another fabric on top instead. <laughs> It stained the thing I used to, for protection, but it's really dry. It doesn't seem it will crack when stretching, which is a good thing for fabric, but it kind of made the red darker. The other colors don't seem to have changed. This one is more vivid, but it muted the red. This is fixate. This is not. Can you see the difference? This is the difference on the back. It will seep through the fabric once the wax or whatever it is melts. And I also got a starter kit with more colors and a permanent gel marker. I want to know if the marker will be permanent after we fixate it or if once you use this, it will stay on the fabric forever. See, the color is very good. It has very good coverage for being a gel marker. The 
let's make a pink design to go with a black marker. I'll draw the outline first and paint it second and then paint it first and draw the outline second. It doesn't work too well if you paint it first and then draw the outline. The crayon will drag the color around if you use it right away. I really like this thing. Funny you should say so. Okay, I'm not giving it a chance, seriously. Wait for it a little bit. Eh. If you wait a little bit, then it will not happen. The dark blue. The sun is blue. Let's fixate this one. There is a slight change on the colors, but I like the style. It's like a very cool freehand childish style. I like this. It's just too bad they are so small. Seven centimeters. Here you can see how crisp the lines are that they make. And I cannot get those crisp lines. And the colors are also not that saturated as in the picture. They seem to be using stencils here though. 12 hours later. It is the other day, and what are the results of our endeavors? I washed it with a little detergent and cold water. With and without fixating the color. And as I suspected, removing paint from fabric is not that easy. It will stain your fabric, so reduce the mistakes to a minimum. As for the markers, they are indeed forever permanent. The wash test didn't take even a little bit off of the paint. These held up pretty nicely. I love it. I painted it pink here. Here, so after washing it is stained forever now. I also don't see much difference in the colors after washing. They are muted, but I'm not sure if they are worse than they were before. Ah. One day I will break the camera and there will be no way back. So is it a keep or a yeet? This one I'll let you decide as well because I'm not sure. It's kind of a cool gimmick, although you cannot really make very crisp lines. It would be amazing if they brought out a pencil or even a mechanical pencil with this inside because then you would be able to really go for it. But I am not a crayon person anyways. Maybe one of your very talented bacons out there is able to do this, but I am not. Do you think of our beautiful Beautiful gadgets. Which ones would you keep and which ones would you eat? Let me know. I'm very curious. I search and search for weird things that I can use for fashion design and for sewing. If you see something interesting, let me know and I will test it out. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these shenanigans, then don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye!